الحمد للہ رب العالمین وصلی اللہ وسلم علی نبی محمد وعلى علی و صحبہ و سلم مبار عیو الحبت فی اللہ امام شیخ عبد المحسن العباد البدر حفظ اللہ تعالی said regarding the fitna or the trial of the so-called Khalifa of ISIS of Iraq he said after Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim all praise belongs to Allah alone may Allah send praise and peace upon whom there is no prophet after him our prophet Muhammad upon his family and upon his companions to proceed a few years ago, a sect was born in Iraq which titled itself as the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria. Its name became well known by four letters. They are the first letters of the title of this so-called state. So it is called in Arabic, Ad-Daesh, or in English we say ISIS, I-S-I-S. At the head of this sect, as some of those who have been following its initiation and its events, there have been a number of different people. The names they give themselves are Abu so-and-so from such and such ascription, or Abu so-and-so, the son of so-and-so, a kunya or a nickname along with an ascription to a city or a tribe, as is the case with the majahil or completely unknown individuals disguising themselves with kunya and ascriptions. After some time had elapsed in the war, which occurred in Syria between the government and those fighting against it, there entered a number of people from the sect, not those fighting against the government, but rather fighting against Ahl Sunnah, who were resisting and struggling against the government and had broken away from them. It had become well known that when this sect killed anyone, they would do so using knives, which is the most disgusting and torturous way a human being can be killed. In the beginning of this current month of Ramadan, they changed the name of their sect to the title Khalifa Islamiya, or the Islamic Khalifat. Their Khalifa, who was called Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, gave a khutbah in a congregational masjid in Mosul. From what he said in his khutbah is, indeed I have been placed in authority over you and I am not the best from amongst you. Indeed he was truthful that he is not the best of them because those who are fighting against him are killed with knives and if it is with his orders or with his knowledge and his acceptance then he is the most evil of them. This is due to the saying of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who said whoever calls to guidance then he will have the rewards the like of the reward of the one who follows him. It will not decrease anything from their rewards. Whoever calls to misguidance then he will have the sin the like of the sin of the one who follows him. It will not decrease anything from their sins. This statement which he said in his khutbah has indeed been said by the first Khalifa in Islam after the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Abu Bakr As-Siddiq Radiallahu Ta'ala Anhu and he was the best of this Ummah which is the best Ummah out of all the nations. Abu Bakr Radiallahu Ta'ala Anhu said this out of humility while he knew and likewise the companions knew عنهم, that he was the best of them due to the evidences which indicate to this from the speech of the Messenger of Allah وسلم, it would be good for this sect to withdraw and have a change of mind and return to its senses before its state faces a threatening windstorm as was the situation with groups similar to it who have preceded this sect through different time periods. Of what is very regretful is that the fitna of this so-called Khalifa which was born a few days ago has found an acceptance by some of the deviant youth in the country of the Haramain, meaning Saudi Arabia.
They began displaying their delight and happiness of the so-called Khalifa, the like of which is when an extremely thirsty person sees a mirage. And amongst them are those who claim oath of allegiance for this Khalifa, Majhul, a completely unknown individual. How can any good be hoped for from those trialed and afflicted with pronouncing takfir and killing in the most hideous and atrocious way? It is obligatory upon these youth that they step away from being emotionally carried away by following the bleeding of anyone and everyone. Also, that they turn back away from these types of actions to that which came from Allah and what came from His Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam since this since in this is protection and preservation, meaning returning back to Kitab wa Sunnah. And this is security and salvation in this world and the hereafter. They should return to the scholars who advise them and the Muslims. Examples of how to return to the people of knowledge and a means of being secure from those who contemplate misguidance is what has been collected by Muslim in his book, A Sahih from Yazid al-Faqir who said, I passionately in, was infatuated with an opinion from the opinions of the Khawarij. So we traveled in a band of a number of people. We wanted to perform the Hajj. And then after that rebel, after that rebellion and the call, the people to the opinion of the Khawarij, we passed by al Madina, And Jabir ibn Abdullah was narrating to the people while leaning, whilst leaning against a pillar from the hadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Jabir mentioned those who will be taken out of the hellfire. So I said to him, O companion of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what is this you are narrating? Why Allah says, إِنَّكَ مَنْ تُدْخِلَ النَّارِ فَقَدْ Verily whom you admit to the fire, indeed you have disgraced him. And Allah mentions, every time they seek to get away therefrom, from anguish, they will be driven back therein. So what is this you're saying? Meaning this person who was affected by the Khawarij was quoting these ayats and surprised at what Jabir was saying. Jabir radiallahu ta'ala anhu replied, do you read the Quran? I said, yes. He said radiallahu ta'ala anhu, have you heard of the maqam of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the place that he will be resurrected at? I said, yes. He said, indeed it is the maqam of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the praiseworthy status and station by which Allah will take out who he wants to take out from the hellfire. Then Jabir went on to describe the situation of the Sarat, meaning the bridge over the hellfire, and how the people will pass over it. And I fear that I have not memorized it exactly, but excluding that, Jabir was indeed certain that people will be taken out of the hellfire after having been entered into it. Jabir radiallahu ta'ala said, they will be taken out and they will be as if they are toasted sesame seeds. So then they will be placed into a river from the rivers of paradise and they will wash there and they will come out as if they were a clean sheet of paper. Then we return to our native place and we said to the others, woe be unto you. Do you think that the Shaykh Jabir radiallahu ta'ala would lie against the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? So we came back from that deviant ideology and I swear by Allah, none of us rebelled except one man from amongst us. Imam Muslim added, or as Abu Naim mentioned the story, Abu Naim is al fadl or al fadl bin Daqwan. And he is one of the narrators of this Isnad. This narration indicates that the band of people were afflicted with being amazed with the opinion of the Khawarij in that the Khawarij would pronounce takfir of the one who would commit a major sin.
and that those who have had takfir pronounced against them would remain in the hellfire forever. Also, this narration indicates that when they had met Jabir radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and he had clarified the issue to them, and when they had accepted that which he had directed them to, they left the falsehood which they had understood to be correct. They corrected themselves from the opinions of the Khawarij, which they had intended to fulfill after performing the Hajj. And this is from the greatest benefits which a Muslim profits from by returning back to the people of knowledge. What indicates to the dangers of being extreme in the religion and deviancy from the truth and from keeping away from Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah is a statement of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from the Hadith of Hudayfa radiallahu ta'ala anhu who said, indeed, the thing I fear the most for you is the man who recites the Quran, so much so that if he is witnessed, he will have delight and joy upon him. He will aid Islam. Then later he will abandon Islam and throw it behind his back. Then he will attack his neighbor with the sword and accuse him of shirk. So I ask, O Prophet of Allah, who is more foremost with shirk? The one accusing or the accused? He answered, the accuser. Collected by Al-Bukhari in Tariqh and by Abu Ya'la ibn Hiban and Al-Bazzar. Being young is a most likely condition for adhering to a wrong understanding. What indicates to this is what Bukhari narrated in his book and with an isnad to Hisham ibn Arwa from his father that he said, I said to Aisha tar, radiallahu ta'ala anha, the wife of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and at that time I was young. Do you see the statement of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala? Verily, a safa wal marwa are of the symbols of Allah. So it is not a sin on him who performs hajj or umrah uh, to the house to perform the going tawaf between them. I do not see anything wrong for anyone not to perform the walk between Safa wal Marwa. So Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha said, No, if it had been as, as you have said, then it would say, So it is not a sin on him who performs Hajr or Umrah of the house to not perform the going tawaf between them. But rather this ayah was revealed regarding the Ansar. They used to perform the Hajj to the idol, Manat. And this idol, Manat, was opposite to a village where there was a lot of water. And they would find it awkward to go between Safa and Marwa. So when Islam came, they asked the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam about this, and then Allah revealed, Verily, a Safa wal Marwa are of the symbols of Allah. So it is not a sin on him who performs Hajj or Umrah of the house to perform the going tawaf between them. Urwa bin Zubair was from the best of the Tabi'een. He was one of the seven scholars of fiqh of al Medina at the time of the Tabi'een. What makes it easier to understand his excuse of him having made a mistake in his understanding is at that time when he asked the actual question he was young. It is clear that being young is a most likely condition for adhering to a wrong understanding and that in returning to the people of knowledge, there is goodness in safety. In Sahih al-Bukhari, from Jundub ibn Abdullah, who said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the first thing that rots from a human is his stomach. So if one of you cannot eat except that which is good, then he should do so. If one of you can try to prevent an intervention coming between himself and between paradise, it is not by spilling a Muslim's blood. Even if it is a handful, then he should do so. al hafiz said in Al-Fat, what occurred in Tabarani from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also from the way of Ismail bin Muslim from Al-Hasan from Jundub and its wording is know that I heard the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saying there is nothing that prevents an intervention coming between one of you and between paradise while he spills a handful of a Muslim's blood unlawfully. If this narration was not mentioned clearly as being narrated from the Prophet Wasallam, the ruling upon it would still be the same, since it is not something that is said from one's opinion.
It is a severe threat about killing a Muslim unlawfully. These narrations in a hadith are taken from what I presented in a booklet entitled With Which Intellect and Religion Are Bombings and Destructions Regarded as Jihad. Woe be to you, O youth, awaken. In this booklet, there are many ayat, a hadith, and many athar, which show that it is prohibited for a human to commit suicide and to kill others unlawfully. This booklet, which was printed separately in the year 1424 Hijri and again in 1428 Hijri, along with another booklet titled Striving to Advise and a Reminder to Those Remaining Afflicted with Tekfir and Bombing, along with a collection of my books and booklets. It is upon these youth who have followed the bleeding of anyone and everyone from this sect to check themselves and to correct their way, that none of them should contemplate joining them. So they end up leaving this life by wearing an explosive belt or being slaughtered with knives, which is uh, a peculiarity for this sect. It is upon them to adhere to adhering and obeying the country of Saudi, where they have lived and where their fathers and grandfathers live, under its authority with peace and security. It is truly an exemplary country for the world and the best country even with its deficiencies, of which the greatest reasons for the, for the fitna in this country are those who have been exiled and pant after imitating the West in everything which is harmful. I ask Allah Azza wa Jal to rectify the condition of the Muslims every place and to guide their young men and women to all that is good and to protect the lands of the Haramain, their government and their people from all evil, to give it success in all that is good and protected. Indeed, Allah is the one who hears and responds. May Allah send praise and peace upon our Prophet Muhammad and upon his family and upon his companions. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam